guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. I'm still drawn to projects that are quick and easy and small and use up some of your scraps. And like I said, they don't take a lot of time to do. So this week, I decided I wanted to, I've always wanted to make one of these for my kids. My youngest is 20. He really doesn't need one now, but maybe I want one for myself, right? When your kids were little, or if you had them when you were little, do you remember those little cardboard memory card games where it had like the red and white on one side and you flip it over and then there was a picture of something and you had to match up the designs. You'd have to flip over one and then you'd have to find the other one that looks like a cupcake. And if you didn't match it, you had to flip them back over and try again. Teddy bears. And teddy bears so you get a match and then you get to keep these and you keep playing until whoever has all of the cards or the most of the cards or you just want to keep playing until you're done so this week I'm going to show you how easy simple quick these projects are show you some of the fabrics that I've chosen for this one I went with a simple layout this time with just four by four so 16 cards that's good for some of the little kids you can have larger cards and smaller cards and more or less depending on how many you want to have and it's nice if you're going to be giving these as a gift to make a little small pouch to put them in I haven't made my pouch yet I've only gotten as far as making this one little set of cards so let me show you how quick and easy these are to make the supplies we're gonna need are really basic we're gonna need some fabrics that we're gonna make since it's a memory game we're gonna need two of each type of novelty fabric and if you don't have anything like I have these cute little bears if you don't have anything like this you can use some pattern fabric if you have some stripes or you can use some men's shirts fabric that maybe you just have solid colors anything you want what I did is I went into my three and a half inch strip scrap bin where I've cut everything up and I just started digging through and finding some appropriate fabrics where I could get at least two three and a half inch squares out of it and then I didn't want to use anything too, like if I were to cut up the skulls, okay, some people don't like skulls for their kids, and these are a little bit larger, so I would just check and see, I mean, I know this is three and a half inches, so if I cut a square, I could probably get the one skull out of it, or it could be a little bit off. I skipped my holiday stuff, otherwise this would be a really great you know, Christmas gift or Halloween gift, any type of gift for a child to just have on hand for them. If you use all holiday fabrics or you can mix them in either way it doesn't matter kids really don't care they love to see stuff year-round it's us adults that kind of get hung up on the holiday stuff I could have used solids and since I knew that everything in here was three and a half inches then I could just kind of see as long as it would fit into a three and a half inch square and I could tell what it was I wouldn't want to have just like the back end of a cow all the time even though that would be kind of funny I decided I wanted mine to be three and a half inches square and when they finish they come out to be just about three inches a little shy two and seven eighths two and three quarters somewhere in there you could go with smaller ones if you were to use a two and a half inch square to start with you would end up with a two inch square and then you can make more of them so it'd be more for an older child make it a little bit more challenging for them so maybe if you're making them for like a two-year-old or a three-year-old, you might want to just do solid colors. That way they can learn their colors at the same time that they're practicing their memory game. And you could use the five-inch charm squares just to give them something a little bit larger to hold on to. Plus a lot of times kids like to just play with their toys. So they could actually just play with these, they could throw them around, and they can have fun with them. What I like about the fabric versus the cardboard memory game you can buy at like Walmart and Target and stuff is these are washable kids are going to spill things on them they're going to put them in their mouth the you know little kids drool all the time a little bit older kids they might have chocolate or ice cream on their hands these can easily be washed by hand just soaked in the sink or you could probably get away with throwing them through the washing machine they're not too too small i i probably would just go ahead and wash them by hand so i went through and i picked out matching sets so whatever fabrics i found i cut two of each of them I just either cut them out individually or stacked them together. I decided for this at this size that I'm gonna go ahead and do mine at three and a half inches. See so yeah, how this one is a cupcake fabric. 
and it's not exactly the same this is the back I've already started working on this one it's not exactly the same but you can tell that they're both cupcakes I said you can use it solid or a semi-solid this is just polka dots and this one is the fabric from the back of my little mini quilts I'm working on so anything you happen to have that's left over that's laying around as long as you can cut two of the same size square out of it you're good to go I chose to use some cotton batting for mine. You can just make it with the two pieces of fabric together. You could take this piece of fabric and lay it down on a piece of felt and then just stitch your zigzag around it so you wouldn't have to worry about stuffing it or flipping it or anything. And then all your felt pieces could be the same or different. It's totally up to you. And that would be a quick project that way. As I was making this, this is very similar to make, basically the same as making a coaster. We're just gonna stitch it all together, flip it out, and then stitch around, which is like a basic simple coaster. It's just a little bit smaller. If you happen to have some fusible fleece, that would work really good too. That way you don't have to worry about anything shifting, even though I didn't notice any shifting problems when I was working on mine. If you don't have any batting, you could still get away with using maybe some interfacing. Stitch some press some interfacing to the back of these that would give it a little bit more stability and then it'd be a lot easier when the kids are manipulating it and it won't get crinkled up too much but I really just like the simple batting it's just one piece of batting with the two pieces of fabric and stitched around I did make all of my backing squares all 16 of them are the same when I remember playing the memory kids memory game with my kids all the back of the blocks were like red and white polka dot or white with red polka red with white polka dot I think is what it was so I decided to make all my backs the same for those of you that don't know when you're playing this game you lay all of your tiles face down and you put them in your little grid so these would be this would be a four by four grid and each child takes turns so you pick two of your cards you flip one over and you see what that is okay that's a cardinal then I have to try to remember where I already saw the cardinal. So I flip this one over and that one's a sunshine, uh, like a sun, so that doesn't match. So I'd flip them back over and I'd have to try to remember that there's a cardinal and a sun. The next person would take a turn and if they flipped this over and found a cardinal, then they could flip this over and they would get to keep the cards. So whoever has the most cards at the end of the game wins. So I like to have them all the same on the back that way when you flip them over to the front that design really sticks out against the back and I don't know it's just the way the game is played right so I cut 16 identical three and a half inch squares for my backing I went with three and a half inch squares of batting I am using a cotton batting you can use your polyester if you want to go ahead and use up your polyester scraps whatever works for you this is a really good thing when you when you're trimming up the sides of a quilt after you've done quilted everything and you're getting ready to put the binding on I always tend to have some extra batting and fabric on the sides and you can use that for both of these you can have the batting and you can use it for your back of your squares I have 16 squares eight of them are all different and then the eight matching ones so I have two bears two polka dots etc etc I gave everything a good press and make sure everything is gonna lie flat Except for my batting, my batting is fine. I didn't have to worry about pressing this at all. I did try to take a lint roller to it as much as I could to get off any stray fabrics, uh, any stray threads. So when I'm ready to sew these together, I start by putting a batting square down. I took my backing fabric and I placed it right sides up on top of my batting. And then I took my novelty or my memory squares and I took that and I placed it right sides together. So facing down on top of my backing fabric then I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around now remember my little trick when we're going to flip something out I start off the fabric I stitch all the way around and then when I get back here I run off the fabric again so this way when I flip it inside out right side out this part right here will tuck in nice and easy I just went with a little bit of a generous quarter inch seam around here somewhere between a quarter and a half just wherever I could run my presser foot and let the stitches go through here I didn't want to take up too much of the fabric and make it too small whatever seam allowance you choose just do it on all of your squares so that they're all the same size 
And anytime we're turning something out, it's always good to trim off the corners, not too close to your stitch line, just a little bit away. And that's gonna reduce the bulk in the corners. And if you feel like your seam allowance was a little bit large, you can go ahead and trim it down to about an eighth of an inch or so. I just trimmed a little bit off of the three sides here. Oh, one more corner. I didn't want to take off too much because I didn't want to risk anything popping out. I didn't want to see my threads too much. And when it came to this top part, I just went ahead and left it as is. I used my little hemostats to go in between. You want to go in between your two cotton fabrics. So that way when you turn it right side out, you're looking at both of these. Do not go between your backing and your batting because then you'll have your batting on the outside. Just wiggle my hemostat in there. I like to grab the batting side because it's two pieces and it's sturdier and I don't have to worry about possibly ripping my regular one piece of cotton on this side. They're small, they're a little bit fiddly, but just pull them on out. If you can get your fingers in there and pull them out that way, that works too. Tweezers, you can kind of try to poke it one way or the other with your fingers. I managed to lose, well, I misplaced my little plastic crochet hook. I'm sure I tucked it away somewhere for safekeeping and now I can't find it. So I just switched back to a metal one. I just want to gently roll out these corners so that they're as close to pointy as I'm going to get without actually popping any threads through. Now if you look right here, these two pieces want to just automatically kind of tuck in. Your seam allowance is right there because we stitched and we gave that little stop area there. I would take this over to my pressing station. I would hit it nice with some steam from an iron so that it looks all nice and flat. And this will set this little seam allowance here so you're all set. And then after that, I just go ahead and stitch around it. This time I just use plain white thread. You can use a matching color if you want. You could also use any of the fancy stitches on your sewing machine to make a fun little border around the cards. I am not going to be changing my thread for every card, so maybe use some type of a neutral thread. And there's my little card. My pattern on the back actually has a right side up. It doesn't really matter for most of the kids, but if they like to line things up, they're all set. And once they're all stitched, then they can just flip their cards over and find the matching sets. I think if you made these with holiday fabrics, like maybe Christmas fabrics, this would be a great little set to give as a gift at Christmas time to add to a child's advent calendar. You could do it with different themes for birthdays or something like that, or if their favorite is like the Frozen, the Disney stuff, you can have all kinds of fun with these projects. It all depends on what type of fabric you have and what type of scraps you have laying around. Or you can always go to the store and buy a little bit. It doesn't take very much. You only need enough to make a couple cards, right? So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you ring that little bell next to the subscribe button, YouTube will let you know whenever I put out a new video. So remember to always craft with scrapitude, and I'll see you next time. Bye.